And Jim. And welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. All right, today we are back at you with another Meteorologist Reacts. As you can see from the title, we are doing the long anticipated, what is it called, Cat Six Day of Destructions, That's part right. one and two. That's right. What a mouthful. <laughs> and holy crap, it was like the longest video ever. <laughs> it ended up being like four hours and change or something mm -hmm. but it was uh we have a lot of thoughts and opinions and today we're going to share them and watch some clips so stay tuned but before we get started don't forget to like and subscribe by clicking below so that you never miss another meteorology monday this first clip i believe we've got the trailer thank you to whoever submitted the little yes. links for us Yes. We were able to watch it through links. I don't know where it actually is though, or if this was like released in theaters <laughs> or like how this happened. So we don't have a ton of clips, but we have the trailer. We're gonna watch that first. But yeah, that's that's what we're gonna do first. That's right. <laughs> Here we go. Global warming is an unproven theory, Andy. Call it whatever you want. Something I'm realistic out there is looking at climate. <laughs> I love that they used actual like lightning footage and so actual weather stuff. National Weather Administration have told me there's a major storm making its way down from the Great Lakes. National Weather Administration. <laughs> I got this massive Arctic low pushing down over us, fueled by the polar jet stream. You got this Gulf storm pushing up from the south. That's fueled by the tropical jet stream. Another great oh, tornado a place, head. Racing it, it. wording and terminology that actually makes sense. Let's get back in the truck. Has a system spawning these kinds of tornadoes ever collided with a Category 5 hurricane? If these two storms do converge, you gotta help those people. <laughs> Takes the truck out! <laughs> Nagasaki times 15. <laughs> I love that guy. Oh my gosh. He brings up all these lines out of sequence and he's going to blow the entire grid to kingdom come. Look out! It's about civilization. Whether or not we'll have one in 20 years. Alright, now out of the uh, dystopian uh, playbook. Nice. So. Let's kick it off. All right, here we go. The trailer, I thought it grabbed me. It, it, it made me interested in seeing it. It's like, all right. There was some parts of CGI that you looked at and you kind of went, okay. okay. But they had some realistic scenes mixed in there. Yeah, they did. They had right terminology. Yeah, they did. They had decent acting. Yeah, they did. So it was like, it, it definitely was one of those, I was like, yeah. It's like, okay. Want to watch this. When I found out, that Randy Quaid was gonna be the storm chaser dude. I wish I, I said, could have it. I said, this is gonna be the best movie ever. They couldn't have cast a better person for that role. Fantastic. <laughs> Starting it off A plus so far. All right, so clip number two. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit into a scene where this guy and this girl go to a hotel room in Vegas. So she goes off to the bathroom to get herself prepared and he's standing there. And so we're seeing the scene. Here it is, clip number two. Look out the window, guys. Always look out the window. He just turns back around. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's it. He's gone. The poor guy didn't even see the one coming from left to right. That was closer <laughs> to the building. He's just kind of like... <laughs> You better hurry it up a little bit. It's a minor. <laughs> it's gone. I forget what the movie was. It was in LA. And oh, the whole side of the building is off, and then the yeah, so the janitor is doing oh, that, and all either. of a sudden it's like he opens up the door, and there's nothing yep. there. I yep. kind of envision, you know, the girl coming out of the the bathroom <laughs> to where'd the room go? Where'd the city go? <laughs> Goodbye, Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> so if what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, then does the debris also stay in Vegas? 
Mm. If you know the answer to that, comment below. <laughs> Utter destruction. There's not one, but two. And uh, <laughs> again, we've got no wall clouds, but you know what? I, I'll give this to them. I'll let this one slide because they do show when they're all like, ha ha ha, tornadoes this and tornadoes mm. that. They do show actual tornado footage. And of course, since it's real, it's got the wall cloud and the supercell and stuff. So exactly. just chop this up to some bad CGI, but you know, <laughs> I won't dock them points. Well, we'll all consider right. it uh, an artifact of being in the desert. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Dry natoes. Yeah, dry natoes. <laughs> Uh, and when did this come out? 2008? 2004. 2004. I think it, was. it was early. So, I mean, props to them for using CGI. <laughs> That's one thing that we can comment about, and that is since the movie was split up into part one and part two, mm -hmm. the first part definitely had a lot of real weather yeah. uh, video. Yeah. They really relied heavily on that to yep. set things up, and it was really good. There's a couple CGI points, but, you know, overall, part one. Bonus points for all the real footage that Absolutely. they used. Absolutely. Part two, they used much more CGI and yeah. much less real footage, and so it kind of started yeah. edging toward eh. Nah. But at least they kept the science right. Exactly. Never once did they say something ridiculous. And even the name of this, the Cat 6, it was like, it was said as a passing joke between meteorologists. Like, mm. oh, it's so strong, we've got to call this a Cat 6. It wasn't like, it's an F10. It wasn't anything <laughs> ridiculous like that. So it's like, all right, okay, we've actually got actual meteorologists here at the uh, the National Weather Association. Yeah. And, and the severe, what is, uh, what is that one? Severe Weather. Weather Center. Severe Weather Center. And at least they have it right. Norman, Oklahoma. Norman, Oklahoma. It is actually um, SPC, which is the Storm Prediction Center. And we also have the National Weather Center, but I guess they just combined them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we understand, you know, they might have to tweak the name because of, you know, whatever, but yeah. props to them for keeping the names very similar. Very similar. And, and the places. Everyone, yeah, and everyone would can associate, okay, the National Weather Association or Severe Weather Center, they understand. Yeah. You know, it's it's the, really these places in real life, they just altered one of the names, you know, to make it a little bit more Hollywood, but clip number three. Everything kind of falls apart, it and the awesome. Severe Weather Center is kind of behind the curve, and the boss is mad. <laughs> He's not happy. He's really not happy. So, in Brian Dennehy fashion, how do you motivate your team? All right, clip number three. Another unexpectedly severe storm in the Gulf of Mexico forced emergency evacuations on eight oil rigs. Damages are estimated at over $2 billion. Real looking footage again? Are still mm -hmm. unknown. How the hell did this happen? Andy, the wind patterns were there, but not these conditions. That vertical shear came out of nowhere. Uh, tornadoes destroy Las Vegas. We got hurricane force winds in the Gulf. We miss them both. What can I say? We were caught off guard. People are dead because we failed. But from now on, if a dog farts in Duluth, I expect somebody in this office to know about it. <laughs> How did he keep a straight face? I couldn't. <laughs> Way to motivate the team. <laughs> It's not, it's not the typical trope of the meteorologist doesn't know and yada yada yeah. yada and yep. oh we were just, oh I mean, it happened out of nowhere. At least this guy's frustrated like, what in the, what, what is happening here? It's not just random news reporters blaming the meteorologists and the meteorologists being like, well because of our predictions and X, Y, and Z and stuff. No, I mean this is exactly how a meteorologist would react if this kind of thing was happening. <laughs> Alright, so this next one we visit our favorite storm chaser here and we are currently in St. Louis and we're gonna see what's happening with the weather there. Our readings are showing this thing spawning F4, F5 tornadoes. What are you seeing? See one coming right up my tail. I gotta go, I gotta go. Tommy. Hey, Tommy. Out of nowhere. <laughs> Cars, bodies, bridges, everything. And he gets out. out of the car. <laughs> my favorite storm chaser. <laughs> That's, That's a like, true chaser right In a now. true chaser fashion, he grabs the camera and he runs. <laughs> gonna, Nothing's flying past him anymore. If you're gonna die, have the camera in your hand, man. Exactly. There it is, these poor people. Oh my god. Poor Arch. It's a direct hit. It's a pretty okay looking, 
looking tornado. Sirens going. Nice. That just kind of appears out of nowhere in front of cars. Debris everywhere. Okay. Yeah. It's like an older building crumbling downtown. Yeah. Don't record. Especially if you got a apartment from there. That's it. I do believe a couple of them are going clockwise, which isn't wrong. Isn't normal. Save the camera and this, is, this is what I don't understand. And then he takes and throws it out the window. At least keep it recording. <laughs> He's just laughing. Having a grand old time. <laughs> I love this movie. The best storm chasing actor Ever. Oh my gosh, that's it. Ever. That's it. <laughs> Randy Quaid set the bar. There's no beating it. Bill Paxton, no. Oh, oh my man. Gosh. That was okay, so let's oh. break it down a little bit. Oh, so wow. so you got tornadoes destroying <laughs> St. Louis. You got definitely CGI and definitely some Hollywood going on there to, to get it all done and yep. you know it doesn't look terrible maybe the rotation is clockwise versus counterclockwise yeah, but it still that? you know gives you that feel yeah and uh <laughs> he's he's getting out of the car in one moment and filming and the next moment he's in the car and says chuck the camera puts it in the doesn't even record the thing coming at him just throws it in the case, throws the case out the window. Why not hold on to the camera while you're in the truck? You're going for a ride anyways. You might as well have something to show for it, right? Oh man. This guy's like, well, hang on a second. Hang on, hang on. Pack this up, throw it out. <laughs> I'm gonna save it. <laughs> oh my gosh. That well, was, oh. Aces right there. Fantastic. Way to go. Nothing you know, better. If you're, if you're gonna go out, go out big, right? All right, I do have a list. I took some notes while we were watching the movie about some of the more like A plus parts or like F minus parts. <laughs> so one thing I wanted to point out was that they said uh, it was like an F5, like the Oklahoma City tornado in 99. I thought that was a great reference mm -hmm. to an actual event. Yep. Because a lot of times they just skip over actual events in these movies and completely ignore them. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow. That, there was an F9 okay. in 99. It was like this huge, memorable, like most powerful tornado in history that went through more Oklahoma. It's like, mean way F to go! I mean F5. What'd I say? F9. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> F9 that went through more Oklahoma. You're you are still know what I mean. thinking of the 500 mile an hour storm. <laughs> it started me for <laughs> The F5 that went through more Oklahoma. So I thought that was a good callback to an actual event. My uh, second favorite quote comes from him over here, who said, we are 30 minutes into the movie and I am not disgusted yet. <laughs> <laughs> if that shows you normally That's how, right. how our reaction to these videos normally goes. Let's, let's just say that the last few meteorologists react, the bar just keeps getting set lower and lower, <laughs> like limbo, you know? Yeah. I mean, you just... How low can you go? And and then this came out and I remember saying to you, wow, it's been 30 minutes and I'm not disgusted with this yet. <laughs> and we had to pause it because we were cackling. And one of the last comments that we have is about the hurricane over Chicago. Yes. So why don't you go ahead and give your two cents? Uh, well, it, it's at one point in the movie there were the hurricane hunters flying over this storm, which was great, fantastic to add that into a movie, by the way. But they were like, gale force winds of 155 knots are imminent and stuff. And I'm like, over Chicago! <laughs> mm. And it's a hurricane. It's a hurricane, which are tropical in nature. Over this is, Chicago. Whether it's a storm system coming up from the south or a system coming down from the north and they merged, why would it be a hurricane? Correct. And it, it wasn't like be... it was screaming along at 300 miles an hour going Correct. from the Gulf straight to Chicago. You don't have a hurricane form over land. It just doesn't. That There, were, there was some, that was one thing that was like, yeah. oh guys, really? Like, you were uh, this close. This close, this close. This close. But 
in terms of the movie and what they were going for, had they just said a huge storm or something like that, but to, but to categorize it as a hurricane. Yep. Chicago guys, <laughs> cat six over Chicago. Oh my. <clears throat> so that, there we go. That's just, uh, that's a little snippet. Again, as we said, we couldn't yeah. find so many clips, but we'll leave the links below that were given to us. So if you guys want to watch it, you have it. That's right. And uh, yeah, that, that, it, it, fantastic weather movie it was again it was like four plus hours it was a long it popped the popcorn for this one it was a long ride but i think as we said in the beginning started off lots of like realistic footage and lots of building and world building and setting up the story and stuff and then by the time we got to part two it's a lot more cgi because it's like okay well now there's a hurricane in Chicago, and it's like, yeah. yeah. Then it started getting a little bit on the ridiculous scale. Yeah. But overall, yeah. I mean, they, they always use the correct terminology. Yep. The meteorologists were not painted as the bad guys, right. which is nice. Or bumbling fools that didn't know what was going on. Yeah. They just, you know. The intern was actually nice and helpful and wasn't, you know, just like, get coffee. And she's like, no, actually, I know what I'm doing. And I was like, you go, girl, you go. Yeah, they had the terminology right in terms of the F scale for tornadoes. Because yep. it was 2004, the F scale didn't change the EF scale until Correct. a few years later. So, good job for them. I think they probably had someone on staff that kept the meteorology pretty accurate. Sure sounds like it. So, uh, it was pretty good. So, now we're going to move on to our big two. And that okay. is meteorological accuracy and entertainment value. First, meteorological accuracy. I think we've already hinted a bunch to it. I would probably put this up at a 7 or an 8. Yeah. I would say they did a fantastic job. A, with terminology. B, with how those events actually happened. And three, with like how they visually showed it. Except for, you know, the hurricane part. Did you see, like, on the desk, they had the hand-drawn with, like, the oil crayons of, like, the surface analysis maps, and it was actually of the storm system that they were talking about? Like, even, like, the background detail. The grease pencils. Grease back pencils. in That's the day. Oh. So, meteorological accuracy, yeah, I agree. About a seven or an eight. Well done. Now, how about... Entertainment. Entertainment value. As we said, 30 minutes in, and I'm not discussing it. <laughs> I'll put the entertainment value up there as well, probably, like, a seven. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was um, a lot better than some of the other ones that we saw. Uh, yes. And I think they did a good job. They had uh, good actors in place. Yeah. It did, they didn't seem like they were out of their role, you know, something totally different that they weren't a good fit for. It made you feel like it was pretty realistic. Yep. I think Brian Denny, he did a great job as the as the lead person. You know, Randy Quaid did a great job as a storm chaser. They didn't make him goofy or anything like that. They just made him be very passionate about what he was doing. You know, it seemed like, yeah, you know, this this was pretty realistic. So, yeah. entertainment value, definitely a seven or an eight. So there we have it. Meteorologist reacts to Cat 6 Day of Destruction, parts one and two. If you want to follow us along on our other weather adventures, follow us over here at Facebook and Instagram. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And happy... Been a week. It is, it is. It's been a week of COVID. But we're back, so that's all that matters, you know?